so I'm deviating from the standard exhibition format. Um, as the introduction said, I'm proposing a curatorial framework underpinned by a theme intended as a provocation for curators and artists. Essentially, an artist or artist would be invited by a curator to respond within a gallery space to a theme which I will elaborate on shortly. Rather than a single exhibition or touring show, this is intended as a template. While I'm keen to develop and realise the initial iteration, it's my hope that the parameters of the project will evolve as curators, artists, audiences and other forces have their way with it. It's an adaptable framework which I hope will appeal to and be able to accommodate different types of practitioners. It's not necessarily resource hungry, that would depend on the curator and the artist uh, and the institution I guess, which would hopefully make it simple to implement and also appealing in our time of limited resources for the arts. So as I said, an artist or artist would be invited by a curator to respond within a gallery space to this mysterious theme I'm about to talk about. Each iteration could take place in a window gallery, the project space in a major institution, or anything in between. So the thematic framework is titled Border Forces. The following slides will show some examples of this curatorial provocation at play around the world. And if this is kind of meaningless to you, then I suggest you watch um, Mad as Hell on Channel 2 and it will make sense. <laughs> so in Australia, as in many parts of the world, border force is a loaded term. However, beyond the obvious connotations, it's worth considering Indigenous connection to land and the inclusion or exclusion of Aboriginal people in debates such as those around migration. Environmental effects on our borders are becoming increasingly apparent. The forces of nature are having an increasingly physical, social and psychological effect and uh, if it hasn't already will likely lead to mass migration. And as well as natural geographies being altered by natural phenomena or man-made climate change, man-made environmental interventions, such as this Chinese Three Gorges Dam, are forcing humans and the environment to take up residence elsewhere or else. Populations are being forced to move, both in the sense of migration and activism, in parallel to international political forces. So this is the people of Kiribati um, drawing attention to the changing borders of their country and um, I think the other image speaks for itself and you're probably familiar with it. So moving on, armed forces and conflict are another major cause of the movement of humans across borders. This has of course been a major source material for artists around the world in different ways. And forces of containment come into play here also. Um, not just containment of people, but also containment of information. In Australia, we are familiar with On Water Matters and the Border Force Act. But around our region and around the world, many are persistently attempting to unravel this containment in various ways. Personal and civil forces such as activism and boycott have been made easier with the rise of technology. Individual and minority voice, voices have a force and traction beyond anything the world has ever seen before. This is a map of regions in Britain that voted for Britain to leave or remain in Europe in the recent Brexit vote. The vote highlighted issues of migration and economic exchange, democratic processes and post-colonialism. Forces of containment and restriction are a major issue in the US at the moment, as this physical manifestation of Donald Trump's proposed Mexico-US border wall symbolises. I'm sure we'll hear more about it in the coming months. Recent shootings of black citizens and police in the US show a re-emergence of a mainstream civil rights movement pushing at the status quo. And of course, the right to bear arms and defend the borders of one's home, family and body is an ongoing debate in that country too, and in other countries as well. 
moving more into the personal, the gated community is a symbol of class borders. It now takes on new meaning as people become more fearful of their fellow citizens. Personal freedoms and public policy are being debated at local as well as global levels. Keep Sydney Open is a fairly visible local example, and there are plenty more. Relentless exchange of goods and services is shaping our globe. Trade encapsulates many supposedly more benign border forces such as tourism and education, which nonetheless shape societies immensely. So it's my hope that this framework that I've outlined will allow local, regional and international artists and curators to explore this complex web of our global world from the same starting point. The project is intended as a consideration of the boundaries that contain it, borders and forces, and the forces that push against those boundaries. It could be seen as, a as an evolving global panel discussion, or perhaps as an, as an exquisite corpse. That's all. Thank you.